nine. We got a lot going on in this episode. We're going to talk about tips and tricks. My goodness, we got Jordan back. So and we got some special guests where we're going to talk about the model off, the financial modeling world championship, championship, championship. But first off, Oz, how you doing? I am wonderful. I am delicious, but you cannot taste me. It's forbidden. You're, you're the forbidden fruit, Oz. That's right. The forbidden fruit. Oz here, your Excel data gaucho in Chicago, keeping everybody's data clean here. All right, and glad to be here on episode nine. And how about Jordan? Welcome back. Glad to be here. Glad to be back. Just coming back off my trip to the happiest place in the world. That's Disney World. Now I'm coming back to you live in Dayton, Ohio, birthplace of aviation, where we make spreadsheets fly. I like that. I just came up with that just now. That's off the top of your head. That's why, that's why you're an MVP, man. That's what does it right there. Uh, and I'm Rick Grantham. Uh, tonight is brought to you. I'm out here in Irvine, California, another uh, the same, uh, the same uh, consulting gig I've been on forever. Uh, tonight is brought to you by Embassy Suite Hotels and um, and Rebel IPA, which is a new one from Samuel Adams. So uh, this is pretty good. Um, so, anyways, check that out. What you got? What you got going there, Oz? I've got Dragon's Milk, the um, Reserve with toasted chilies, and I tell you, this is is nice and thick, and it is spicy. Cause I've had a stout that had some chilies in it, and it was wimpy. This perfectly balanced. You know, I had somebody who watched the show for the first time last week or last episode, and they said they watched the first few minutes. They thought it was a drinking show. <laughs> <laughs> they were disappointed when they found out it was Excel. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so first up, uh, Jordan. Would you mind letting us know who won the challenge from two weeks ago and get us set up with our challenge of the sure, week? Sure, I would not. So this week's challenge brought to you by VBA Express, vbaexpress.com, .com, .com. I'm trying to do that echo. That's that pretty good. That was good. That was good. So we, we missed, <laughs> we missed uh, I, I was gone last week, so um, we're going to just continue where we left off. I'm going to jump jump to my screen share so I can show you what's going on and this is always the best part where you wait for me to click on a whole bunch of things before you see it. Okay, so last week's question was what is the maximum zoom percent that will show range names on a spreadsheet? So, a lot of people responded. Um, let's get to the answer. That answer is, boom, 39%. Man, that is a huge 39 that I wrote that's, on my <laughs> that's zoom. PowerPoint. But I didn't want you to miss it, so that is that is um, the answer, and let's see who this week's winner is. Oh, it's Aditya, who he, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, he sent in the correct oh. answer, so thank you. We got a lot of responses, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, um, let's go to this week's question. Okay, so this one comes to us from Raheem. He sent us a, uh, he sent us a challenge question, and we're very appreciative of that, and we'll, we'll talk about him later, uh, but he runs excelbasement.org. And his question is, how many worksheet functions are there in Excel 2013? So I am looking for a count. So tell me how many of those functions there are. And, you know, maybe there's some disagreement. I'm not sure. He had a spreadsheet that he sent me that showed me a uh, full count, so I believe him. So if you get within a certain tolerance of that number, let's say plus or minus five, we will, uh, you will be eligible to win. So remember, we pick the uh, answers from all the winning entries. And if you think you know the answer to this week, uh, this week's challenge, you can email me at the challenge ex at exceltvshow.com, the official challenge email of Excel TV. Or you can also post it on VBA Express or in our LinkedIn group or in the YouTube comments below. Make sure to follow us. We're at facebook.com, Excel TV series. We actually also have uh, a group we're starting, so make sure to join that too. We're also on Twitter. So... Make sure to let us know what you think the answer is, and remember that we are going to take plus or minus five tolerance within the answer, so, you know, if you want to guess that <laughs> you think you're going to hit it, that's up to you, too. So, jumping back to me, that was this week's VBA Express Weekly Challenge, brought to you by VBAexpress.com. So, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed, Jordan. You're, you're off your game a little bit from, from being gone. So, here's what, here's what I usually hear is... Um, Hey, yo, be sure that you tell the magic elf underneath right. the bridge and you can level up and then that's I how you, that. I can 
That was a good one. Uh, this is just like, hey, yeah, it's winter. <laughs> My Go wife on. heard it. And she said it didn't land. She said she heard. She was on that episode. She said, I don't know if that one landed. I had to watch it three times before I, before I got it. But I was like, oh man, that's on. Well, that's not. That's you know, I was trying to think of something funny, and I, I just it didn't. I didn't come to it. There, I think one of these weeks I talked about the IBM I series AS four hundred. I think that was way too esoteric. So I really yeah. need to. Yeah, step bring up it your in. Game. Step it up. You, you could still park your, you could still write your answer on an ID card or you know an index card and put it in a Porsche Boxster and park it in my driveway. Well, I'm still taking answers that way. So, absolutely. So, um, so thank you, Jordan. VBA Express. Go ahead and get your, go ahead and get your, uh, your answers over to Jordan via Twitter. Uh, Elf. Um, um, any trolls or anything else? Anything to be able to get those answers over to Jordan. So next up our special guest. Now, this is the first time we have two special guests. These are the guys behind Modeloff, modeloff.com. Uh, if you go there, you'll see this is the World Financial Modeling Championship. So, man, this is exciting. I first found out about these guys on LinkedIn like a, a year or so ago when they had all the gurus from like PricewaterhouseCoopers and Deloitte and all the guys there and Bill Jones there, of course, and man, it was just, uh, it was really cool stuff. And so, uh, Johan, John, hello, welcome to the program, and, and could you tell us a little bit about Model Off before we, before we jump in? Hi guys, hi, certainly. And first of all, thanks for having us on the show. It's, uh, it's always so refreshing for us to find other people that are so passionate and so interesting and kind of have, share such a love for Excel and are, are doing really interesting things with it and kind of building a community around that. So it's, uh, it's wonderful to be a part of it. So look, Model Off, I guess, John and I both come from a, a professional services background and we've spent plenty of time sort of modeling in investment banking or management consulting in our sort of previous careers. And what we'd always noticed is that in just about every firm that you went to, there was always these guys that were brilliant at financial modeling and Excel, but they were kind of swept into the corner a little bit. And what we thought is, well, wouldn't it actually be really cool to give these guys a world stage to be able to compete against one another and use this skill, uh, this skill set that they developed to kind of compete against people and kind of write, well, who is the best in some of this kind of Excel and financial modeling competition? So we, we started sort of scouring around and there were a few competitions out there. But we thought, all right, well, how can we actually take that to the next level and have a little bit more fun with it? And I think we then also realized there's potential huge educational benefits that can flow from that as well, whether or not you kind of, you know, this is your first year or two using Excel full time in a job or whether or not you, you guys like yourselves that have been around Excel for, for most of your adult lives but are still kind of learning things along the way. There was a lot that kind of people could get out of it. So we... um. We decided to put together an international competition, which was two online rounds so that people could compete from anywhere around the world. And then we felt, well, let's fly the top 16 finalists to arguably the spiritual home of financial modeling, being New York and kind of Wall Street. You've got a, a lot of the sort of top finance companies there as well. Uh, and then we kind of thought, all right, well, what do we need to do to kind of make this a reality? We got Microsoft involved. We got some of the, uh, the top finance companies involved. Bloomberg were a big supporter very Kaplan. early on. Kaplan have come on sort of since. AMT wow. Training, one of the sort of biggest financial modeling training companies uh, that train yes. a lot of the banks and various yes. things yeah. like that. And St. Young have been a big supporter of the competition sort of throughout. So, and then of course, in terms of the Interview judges, Street. yeah, we, had, we run the competition on a platform called Interview Street. Uh, and then in terms of the judges, I mean, we had your uh, good friend and sort of co-MVP Bill Jellin or Mr. Excel that uh, you guys had on the show last month. So we've got him involved as one of the judges in New York. Uh, so we put the competition together and in its first year in 2012, we kind of thought, all right, this is going to be a little bit of an experiment. And it was actually a lot bigger than we, uh, than we expected. So it very quickly became an annual competition. It's now in its third year. Last year, we had over 3,000 people actually compete uh, in the online rounds and then the the winner was actually a 26 year old female consultant from London who Elizabeth picked up or something? Yeah. Uh, yeah. first prize and, and had a wonderful time. And, and what was her name? Her name was actually Hillary Smart. Oh okay, yeah, okay. I, I she works, she so, works for the well, very well recognized 
Consultancy Numeritas. Yes. Very cool. So, yeah, I, go ahead, Jordan. So you said that um, you were the the uh, feedback was actually sort of it, it grew bigger than you expected. I mean, how how large did you think it was going to be, and how big did it eventually become? So I mean, we we started the competition off as you know we, we were hoping to get kind of we were confident we could get around fifteen hundred people in the competition. Um, you know, to, to to increase it 50% the next year was good. I still think there's a lot of scope, um, particularly when you start hitting developed kind developing countries. Um, you get deeper into certain um, societies, like some of the actuarial societies, um, some of the the heavy finance societies, you get into the student societies, business schools, and things like that. So. Um, that, that's really a function of our marketing capabilities, uh, I see. And also finding ways to create a path for people to continue to improve. So you'll notice that we always give our questions away for free on the, on the website because we see education as a really, really important part and giving people the confidence to be proud of their skills in Excel. So um, we're all quite familiar with, I think there's like 700 million people in the world who use Excel, probably... 70 to 80 million who use it quite in quite a sophisticated capacity. Um, so we'll, we'll just see, but um, we've got to keep it cool, we've got to keep improving, and um, we've got to keep finding ways to create value for people to want to keep coming back and keep improving. And I think one of the other things we've also seen is that a lot of people have looked at it and kind of gone, I'm not sure if this is for me, maybe I'm not good enough, or is it the right kind of financial modelling? and have sort of kept away in the first couple of years, but then they've had friends or colleagues that have start, said sort of, I've done it and I reckon you'd actually be really good at this. So I think we're actually now starting to penetrate a much broader audience of people who use Excel, but perhaps haven't thought they they had the, the top level of skills. Wow. This is just fascinating. And and by the way... Uh, uh, Hillary, Hillary, works, Hillary works for Operas, as I said. You know, oh. Operas is a very well-known project finance firm in the UK. Uh-huh. Okay, yeah, and, and there's a, a picture of Hillary. All right. Yeah, so that's Hillary receiving uh, the winner's trophy in December last year in New York, actually at Microsoft's offices. Ah, okay. All right, cool. So, John, is that, is that you in the background there? Yeah. Nice. John. Sorry to, sorry to disappoint you, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> the hair's in John's background. You know, so you, you get me thinking about a, a blog post I did a while ago. Are, are any of... The uh, five of us musicians, other than me, I do have mean beatbox. That's about it. Other musicians, um, yeah. I, I used to play flute at uh, uh, quite a high level. And Johan's got a musical family. I, I actually come from a very musical background. I play guitar. Look, as far as musical talents within the financial modeling community, <laughs> um, it's not been an area that I think we've done as much research as perhaps we need to. Well, well, I tell you though, is is I think that um, people who work with data are behind the scenes like drummers and bassists. I mean, I'm serious. I, so I just what wonder because what? when when you talk about people like being shoved in the back, talented people shoved in the back, skills don't get really developed. They just get stuff to do, and I just think about. Um, Especially a jazz bassist, just doom, 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 just walking all the time. And then you have like Jaco Pistorius and Bootsy Collins and Victor Wooten that come out front, right? Bring it out front. And then you have band leaders like George Clinton and 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 James Brown that will let them come out front. So you two are like James Brown and George Clinton. And um, who else? Uh, and the red hot chili peppers that let flea shine and come forward, right? And yeah, I, and I think I, really it's, think it's, yeah, I, I love I, that analogy. I, I, love, I think I think you're exact. I don't. I don't. I, I think we're still we're still having a lot of fun, which is which is the good which is the good thing. But we just like for us, it's about it's about empowering people, and often. Yes. You know this young gen you know this young generation of between eighteen to thirty five. Uh, one of our finalists last year was thirty nine year old, I think, partner from Ernst and Young in investment banking arm, and he he just loves the analysis. 
but, but there are also some, uh, we occasionally we get 21, 22 year old people performing exceptionally well and it's like you just, you, you need a stage for people to dance. Yes. And whether it's music or whether it's um, accounting or whether it's Excel or whether it's, it's building or whatever it is. You need to empower people to celebrate being excellent, and um, yep. we we try and keep a really simple objective. And uh, oh, oh, thank you for your kind of comparisons to the, the musical industry, but it's yeah, we're having a lot of fun, and it's good. But your point is spot on, Oz. That I mean, in society, we recognise these sports stars, we idolise these these extreme sports athletes, and what we're trying to do in our little kind of community, in and around financial modelling and Excel and all that kind of stuff is to be able to point to these guys and recognize and celebrate their success, their skill, that these guys are at the top of their game. Questions that we thought were going to be impossible for people to do in 45 minutes, we watched the guy do it in 30 minutes. <laughs> yes, yes, I get it, I get it, man. And, get it. and you know, if you actually run an economic argument here, that sports stars get paid, you know, um, you know, in the hundreds, if not millions of dollars a year for a few years in their career. Well, if you look at a professional who does it between the ages of 20 and 70, their lifetime value of a, a professional is far higher than a, yep. uh, most athletes on the aggregate. So we're, uh, we're, we're trying to go down that athlete path yep. um, and treat the, the Excel and financial modelling people, uh, giving them the credit they deserve for being outstanding, thinking, outstanding thinkers and for the way in which they push the world forward. With their numbers. I, I love this. I love this. And then especially when you, we're going to talk about the other um, other contests that you run. And I really see just the analogy to a band because, right, your drums and your bass, they are the foundation. If people are mm -hmm. dancing, it's not the guitarist. A guitarist can't exactly. sit on top of a bad rhythm section. Can't do it's, it. A salesperson can't go out and sell on top of bad data. They go sell some stuff, and then customers call and complain, and why you send me duplicate products? Why is my profile all jacked up? Because the data's messed up, not the salesperson. The salesperson's pretty. Preach. Yeah, and I, and, I, and, I, and I think that you, you, Excel's one of those products, as a product, as a community, as an ecosystem, it's one of the only technologies that remain, the, the world turned around and said, that's awesome. And it's been like that for nearly 25, 30 years. It gets the job done amazingly. Um, yes. And we feel as though ultimately, yes, there are, there, there, are, there are heaps of awesome products in the world, but for the purpose of, I mean, who knows, if we're having this conversation in five years' time, maybe we, you know, we explore different aspects and different parts of how Excel modeling and financial modeling would actually work, and there might be different streams and different aspects, and that's an evol natural evolution of the competition. But um, ultimately, the fact that people choose to use this powerful tool to create insight, solve problems, yeah. make the world kind of to drive decision making on a day-to-day -day basis, and it's so accessible, um, it's so well supported by Microsoft and their kind of and a number of the community partners. That you've got and we've got. It's um, it's something we should be celebrating. And um, yeah, we. Our ultimate vision is just like Nike has big posters of Michael Jordan all around the place. We'd love one day just a, a poster with a big aspirational quote around excellence, with kind of some of these top financial modelers just hanging on the walls inside yeah. organisations. We'd love to oh, see that. That's awesome. I'm getting worked up. I love that. <laughs> that's cool stuff. I can't use my bad. Yeah, you know, you know. Here's the thing, uh, and I was telling a friend this uh, last week, last weekend, is you know, there are the Excel people or data people. Uh, we're not the sales people usually. Like like Oz says, we're not usually the 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 lead singer. We're the guys in the background, the ladies in the background making it happen. And and usually, when you think of like a, fi a financial modeler, you think of a data person, you think of us Excel people. You know, what, what you think of a lot of times is the people that you. Uh, that you don't put out in front of the customer, you know, the mm -hmm. people who are just cranking out code, and the people who, who you not only probably don't talk to at work, but maybe you don't even like to brush up against them in the hallway. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what you think about. But I gotta tell you, I think it's awesome that you're taking all of these people, you're taking this talent, you're putting these people front and center on stage, just to you know, just to kind of 
just to claim the microphone and just to make that happen. And I think it's beautiful that you're doing it, that you did the first one in New York, because as you were telling the story of bringing all those people together from kind of all walks of life, it just reminded me of, there's a TV show here in the U.S., The Apprentice, uh, with yeah. Donald Trump, where they just bring everybody in who's got to fight for the crown right there in the middle. And it, it made me think, Oz, and maybe you can help me with this, uh, with Bill Jelen, maybe he's not really Dan Aykroyd. Maybe he's Donald Trump. Maybe that's who needs to play him. He needs to play him. <laughs> what do you think about that? Hey, um, that's an idea. I had, to, I had to think about that, but I I, I get well, how you thinking. I get got, got to let in. <laughs> I'm not sure whether uh, Bill mentioned this when he was on your show uh, a few episodes ago. But as far as we can tell, Mr. Excel is actually the first ever financial modeling commentator in the world. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, okay. Jump onto the Model Off Facebook page. There's an album there that has a whole bunch of photos from the, the live finals that we held in New York last year. Wow. And we run a group challenge where we have an audience of about 250 to 300 people at Microsoft's office on a Sunday sitting around this little clump of tables in the middle of the room. And we actually put the finals at, uh, finalists together, and we set them just really short, sharp, kind of innovative challenges. Uh, the actual challenges are now on our website that anyone can kind of download and try. But we have the whole crowd surrounded, and there is Bill Jelen roving around, commentating on how these guys are trying to solve these different Excel challenges. That's so awesome. As as tell, we've got the first yeah. ever financial modeling commentator. And for Jordan, it might Jordan, it might be really interesting uh, with, with your, you know, very strong technical backgrounds. It's fascinating when you watch the finalists. And I remember the first year we had two guys from Goldman Sachs that were sitting on the back two computers. And there were two guys to the right sitting on um, work on their computers. But what, what was beautiful about it was the different styles of Excel modeling, financial modeling. The Goldman Sachs guys were drilled, and you could see the rows going bang, 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 down, 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 like it was a clinic, like it was a clinic. And uh -huh. on the right hand side, you had these freestyle modelers. They don't do format. <laughs> oh, they're crazy. They got tie dye t shirts on. They do styles. They just, they're, they're artistic, you know? And they just like, I, I said to one of them, I just looked at one of them, he goes, Trust me, I'll fix up the formatting later. <laughs> and I'll fix up the <laughs> crashes later. But he goes, for me, and he goes, where I come from, it's about getting the job done, the guy said to me. And, you know, that kind of insight, and when, you, when you're dealing with this kind of, it's extreme talent, right? Yeah. And, um, yeah, the really structured, methodical approach that has been drilled into, you know, 20 hours a day, or it's kind of the real deep thinkers who kind of may not work as fast and as, Rigorously, but they prefer to think. You know? wow. They could do that's a hell of a lot of these strokes and they could get What do you so think, I, Jordan? So Jordan? I think I'm a freestyler. That's what Jordan, I think I am. Jordan, that's what I think yeah. you are too. As I, as I think about the, and I think I heard that you, you, you went through this competition before, and, and I, could yeah. think of, I could think, and I hope you share that story in just a second, but you know, I think about you doing the first contest, and I could, and, and as uh, they're just telling that story, I, I could picture you like petting your cat. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, the scruffy beard and just try to just do it all the coding in the background. See, I'll fix it up later. No, okay. that's 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 how it is. It's kind of like if I was drawing something out, you know, um, I'd write, take notes, and I'd be like, no, I hate that. I'd rip it off, and that's what I was doing on the tabs. You know, I was doing something on a tab, and I was like, oh, this this stinks, but I want to get rid of it, so I make a new tab. I'm like, oh yeah, that I actually like that from the other tab, so I'll copy and paste that over. And this is one thing I really like about the contest. So if you're thinking about um, doing it everyone out there listening, uh, you really should, because I didn't think I could do it, so I, I let it go by the first year, and then the challenge questions came out, and I decided, um, I, I was looking through those questions, I'm like, all right, well, maybe I, I can do this, and I did make it this year to the second round, and unfortunately, I wasn't available to take it, but this is the really cool thing that this um, Excel, or at this uh, financial modeling um, competition test, because it doesn't actually necessarily matter how you get the right answer. So it's not such a, as a technical skills, this is how you do this in Excel, although that is part of it. There are questions about functions that um, really a lot of people should know um, pretty well. But for the, uh, for the, uh, wor the problem piece, it actually, it doesn't necessarily matter how you get it done with Excel, but you do need Excel to do it because it's that big. 
Um, so I think that's really cool that you have all these different ways of doing it and all these different styles, but people are arriving at, um, at uh, similar answers. I, I mean, this yeah. is really... That is a skill that we should be encouraging because we, I think that we focus so much on technical analysis. What is, um, you know, do it this way and this way, and we don't necessarily let modelers, well, I should say, I, I think the good companies let modelers sort of, here you go, go do it, but I think that by and large companies uh, have a very rigid view that this is how you do it in Excel. We don't use Excel for this, we use it for this. So I think it's very cool. And probably last year was actually the first time I actually realized we actually had some finalists there who actually don't model on a daily basis, who don't use Excel on a daily basis, and, you know, they, they're at it. They think strategically about problems, and they think about insight, and, it, you know, if I was to give a tip to people looking to compete in 2014 in the exciting competition, you know, we, we do test, obviously, advanced Excel, with, you know, obviously accounting and um, some financial analysis skills help too, right, to get to the finals. But, um, you know, it's not just about speed. It's about thinking. And um, I think there's a bit of a misconception that this is a, you know, a young man and a young woman's competition because um, it's all just about pounding out keys. But I think Jordan's exactly right. It's about getting the job done. Um, and it's not so much about, in the rounds, about actually getting to the, you know. It, it's funny. The two winners that we've had, Alex Gorn, a 24-year-old from New Zealand in 2012, and Hilary Smart, a 26-year-old consultant, have both made this comment that when they actually sit down to do their questions, they'll actually take a moment to sit down and map it out before they actually jump in and touch a key. And I think that was a really interesting reflection in a competition where speed is important, it is critical, we do, people, do put people under a lot of time pressure, but they're still taking time to actually visualize and map it out in their own head before they just jump into Excel. Yeah. So, so would, you, wanna, would you mind? Go ahead, Oz. I wanted to go back. Um, when you mentioned the people who, who pound out by row is very, sounds like uh, very structured versus the freestylers, can you give an idea of what you mean by bang it out row by row? So typically on a discounted cash flow, for instance, you know the structure of the periodicity of the years. You know the kind of the format of how you know, the P&L, the cash flow, the balance sheet connect together. You know how the ratio analysis works. And then Jordan's laughing in the background because he, he's, 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 he's got a good idea for kind of the, the methodology that some of these people do. Um, particularly if you work in a, in a heavy finance environment where you're very transactional, doing a very similar type of work on a day-to-day -day basis, you get pretty quick, I would have thought. Um, and... Um, merger models and things like that. Like they're very, um, I wouldn't say they're certainly not templated. But when you've done, you've built 500 of them, you get pretty good after a while. Okay. Um, whereas the freestyle kind of people might be people who have more of an operational background, a restructuring background, um, an internal Excel champion function within their company, and, and they're problem solvers, right? And they do things with data. They do things with the on the numbers side. They don't actually know, they've got some incredible skills, but they don't, they like to listen to the problem first before yeah. they, they get yeah. into solution mode. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha, yeah, that, that makes sense. So the people who, who do this stuff on a regular basis, they can anticipate what piece needs to go where, and they might have a rhythm and a method for doing it, versus the people who, uh, who really do need to think, and they start to put pieces together as they go? Well, well, yeah. You, you, I mean, probably one of the best, if you can think of sporting teams that you know, there are some, if you look at tennis, for instance, there are some players who just serve you off the court with brute force and brute speed, you know, and hitting power. But there's other people who've got just beautiful finesse. And one's not necessarily a better player than the other, but it's they're just different types of players. Right. And, um, and I think taking the tennis you know, the, the brute force versus the, the, the elegant player um, to the, the Excel world, I think that people can start to relate to that concept. And, and, and there's a lot of people who are hybrids in the middle. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and, and really, our competition's also about building on your weaknesses, right? So um, a lot of people, you know, they come from particularly strong backgrounds in one aspect, but then our competition gives them a reason and, uh, grounds to actually build a broaden their skills base 
um, so that they can do, whether it's quantitative modeling, business modeling, Excel modeling, financial modeling, whatever you call it, um, numbers, integrated numbers analysis, yeah. um, so that you can be really good at it and you know, ultimately add value to yourself and also to your company you work for. Yeah. Well, as, as we close out this segment, would, would you mind talking a little bit about the timeline? So for 2014 for the model op, would, would you mind talking about what that timeline looks like? Yes, certainly. So late October, Model Off will get underway with round one again. So people can uh, pre-register at the moment. We'll open up full registrations uh, about two months before the round actually kicks off. So people need to, to register for the competition. Uh, it costs $20 for students or $30 for professionals to enter. Uh, and I believe we're actually going to be giving away a few uh, free entries at some point throughout the show. So uh, people can get involved, go to modeloff.com, sign up there. Uh, round one is a two-hour online sort of quiz that they get involved in. We then take the top 50% through to round two, which happens two weeks later. And this is a, a, a quiz that happens simultaneously around the world, so everyone is doing it all at once. And then we fly the top 16 people to New York in the first weekend of December to compete in the finals in New York. And we do a whole variety of other things with the finalists while they're there in New York. Last year, we had a three-hour product insight session with five of the lead uh, program managers from the Microsoft Excel development team. So that was a really cool way of kind of sharing ideas of all right, the guys who are building the product actually speaking with some of the heaviest and most kind of hardcore users of that product. You put them in a room for three hours, and again, you can imagine what happens. It was really enjoyable for, for both sides. And then on Sunday, we put them through four hours of testing in the morning, and then we have a live finals event in the afternoon, traditionally held in Microsoft's office in New York, where we have a, a live finals audience. This year, we're actually going to be live streaming the finals, so that people all around the world can get involved. Uh, so we might have to, to look at some way of tying that in with Excel TV, have a, yes. a special episode from New cool. York or something. And it's a great thing in New York, like as Joanne was touching on earlier on in the interview, it's kind of, in New York, it's a great networking opportunity as well. That if you're in the Excel, if you're in the Excel space and you're passionate, come along and like at the drinks, you know, three, four hundred people at drinks, you know, who are all passionate about Excel. It, it, it's a great night and um, it's a great, it's a great function on the Sunday, um, and the first week of December. So if you are passionate about it, um, yeah, I think you'll get a lot of value out of it. Wow, I need to. We need to go. We do. We do. <laughs> I, I, I'm a Jordan. We, we need to get a bus and just make a road trip and go. No, I think, I think we need to do really well on the competition, and then we can. Let's see. Maybe I see. A trip. I, I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm already <laughs> planning to be a spectator. <laughs> you know, so you know, so I tell you what. I tell you what. This um, I'm left with this this feeling of um, like like a permission. To to really be passionate about Excel, and now I'm passionate about Excel, but but you know the idea of you know you've got all of this, you've got R and um, uh, Tableau and all this Salesforce.com, and you want to be open to all of these tools, right? But then when you and Chandu and some of the others come on and are really committed to Excel, you know it's like an, an even greater permission to really be passionate about it and own it. Well, I, th I think professionals of the future, Oz, are going to need to be versatile. Yes. And wh what I mean by that is that I think in the next five to ten years, we're going to actually see the convergence uh, in practice, right, of data and numbers. So, for instance, if you're doing a transaction, company A is buying company B for $100 million US, um, you know, the financial model says something really powerful, and, and I, at, at the moment I don't know a tool better than Excel, and I won't know for a while there is a tool better than Excel to do that at a really in a trusted capacity. But also, what's becoming really important is kind of customer analytics, business analytics about the acquisition target, right? Yeah. How engaged people? What are the sentiments? Um, what's the net promoter score? What's the re retention like? What's the lifetime value of a customer? But actually, not the numbers side. The data, and to your point about Tableau and some of the other outstanding tools out there, yes, they are. Um, and R as well, right? It, it, it's important to be versatile, and I think that we're going to see a lot of people with Excel skills and um, finance and accounting skills who are really analytical anyway. I think they're going to be making a transition across to 
some of the other side. And I think they're going to be developing their skills back and an appreciation back the other way. Um, so ultimately, it's it's about being super strong. It's a super analyst or super analytical. Well, kind of, well you know. let, let me tell you this, though. Is in the world of a freelancer, if I'm sitting in a JavaScript class or an R class, I'm not making money. Right? And even if I do go get some book and start learning this stuff, a client will call me and they want something done in Excel. And so it's been it's been um you know over the you know about five years that I've been freelancing, you know, I've I've taken a PHP course. And then somebody calls up and they want something done in Excel. <laughs> right? And PHP developers are expensive. And that's time consuming, and the customer can't maintain that stuff when it's done. Mm. So that's that's where I'm really getting at, you know, from a professional standpoint about really owning Excel. And I feel like, um, you know, now I know some stuff about PHP, but has it helped me professionally? Well, as far as like my background knowledge, you know, because I've had a client that had me build apps, the prototype of apps in Excel because he's got his PHP developers but they are way more expensive than I am. Have Oz build a prototype in Excel, turn it over to them and say get this working and he doesn't have to talk to them anymore. I think Oz, I think you need to raise your prices. That's what Absolutely. <laughs> so, so, uh, so, so thank you for that fellas. So, so the way they can get a hold of you is at model off dot com right model off dot com and follow yeah, the whole process there. Or just Google model off for the financial modeling world championships and uh, it's right there. That sounds great. So, so so thank you so much and please uh please stick around for the rest next part of the conversation. Uh, Jordan, would you mind kicking us off with our topic of the week? Sure. Um, just real quick, I just want to say something that you know because I haven't been here in a while. I, I'm off my game. So uh, they uh they had mentioned um that there will be uh, uh, some free model off uh, entries and that's going to be for that's going to be for our challenge winners so we actually have several yes. of those and those are available so seriously um, dude that is awesome yep, yep. That okay is great. so this is a this is a great topic it feeds um, naturally from our guests so um, really it's uh, you know what is the relevance of excel why are we doing um, you know why uh, is Excel so great for not just for financial modeling, but as an application platform? So why is it so important um, these days that we see it so great? And for me, and I know I, I've brought this up before, it's always about um, you know there are these companies that come in, so like they're selling ERP systems, things that uh, are meant to be custom analytical tools to different to different companies. So say I'm a small business and I want to. I want to buy a data analysis tool. Well, right now there's a lot of big vendors selling me a lot of big products, and there's still not yet this market for custom products. And I, except unless you want to make your own software application, I think Excel really gets people um, almost sometimes 100% there into this custom development solution, but sometimes 80% there. So that's my, that's sort of my thing on it. That's why I always tell clients, you know, I can make something for you that's exactly what you need, and then you own it and you can sell it. You don't have to pay licensing or maintenance fees. Um, but I think this flows naturally. You know, what is the importance of Excel right now um, in financial and modeling? But even outside of that, and the stuff I know, as you say, you don't do a whole lot of financial modeling. But it is an application at its core. So that was my monologue. I feel like it went on for a while, but I bring that to the to the panel to discuss. So, so I'll jump in and do my Oz impersonation here. <laughs> what, what, was, what, what was the question again? Oh, sorry. Uh, what is the relevance, the importance of using Excel? So why, you know, when we think about the financial modeling competition, why are we still thinking about Excel? Why is it so great to use um, for modeling or to build applications, um, things like that? So I just want to get a different different opinions you, on this. Yeah, I gotta tell you, from from my perspective, it's and you know, I used to do financial modeling, but when I worked back at Citibank, way back in the day. And um, and and also used to have to build. Uh, I worked for an HR outsourcing company where we had to build, um, or it was my job to build the forward-looking financial statements if we're gonna, you know, if we're gonna take over HR for I don't know a very large company. What does it look like if we bid for that business for pricing, et cetera? And, and I gotta tell you, from from my perspective, first off, it's on everybody's desktop. So I mean, it, it just it's so pervasive that it's everywhere. You got to come up with something that's just. It's so much better than Excel to you know, to to get rid of it. It's relatively 
inexpensive compared to a lot of the other tools. And man, it's just so dang versatile. You know, I could do so much with it. You know, outside of you know, there's structures of where the cells have got to be and all that sort of stuff. So I mean, rows and columns, and so you know, that that could be a little bit of a limitation. But for for doing financial modeling, net present value, forward cash flows, internal rate of return, et cetera, I mean, it's just it's it's it, it, you have to be at Excel. It, it feels like. I mean, sure, you could build online calculators, but then you're even with your online calculators, you're getting an output so that you can put it in Excel to run a different model. Right, so you can run a cash flow, or you can run an income statement, and, and I, I, it's hard for me, as a former finance guy, to really imagine a world without Excel. Yeah. What do you think about that, Oz? Well, um, would uh, John, Johan, would you want to say so? I, I'm, I'm thinking yeah. about. Uh, I've got some ideas. <laughs> yeah, um, this obviously came up very early on when we decided to run the financial modeling world championships. Do we open it up? to be on Excel and we ultimately made the decision to keep it just in Excel so that we had a uniformity of questions, it was easier to mark, it was easier to uh, assess and that still for us covered sort of 95% of the audience that we wanted to reach so for us it was a no-brainer but uh, the stuff that you sort of touched on Rick I think is absolutely important particularly that inertia of Excel, it is on everyone's computer everyone at least has some basic level of understanding of Excel are probably two of the most important things and I think that is going to continue for a while and, and the reason I say that is when we were in New York and we had this product insight session with the team from Excel and our, our modelers, we were talking about some of the latest features that are being worked into Excel and some of the new features that are coming out in Excel 2013 and, and that people are aware of but when it comes to the financial modeling work that people do inside organizations, they're still using Excel 2010, they're still using Excel uh, 2007. And it is so hard for them to actually adopt the latest version of Excel, let alone anything else. And it really struck me as that point of what other industry in the world do you have the hardest core users of a product still two or three years away from actually using the current release of a product? In the technology space, anyone who has an iPhone, as soon as the new one comes out, the hardest core users have it in the first few days. Whereas Excel, it's kind of like, we're not going to use the latest features for another three years. And that kind of really just struck me as a reminder of what an ingrained position Excel has and in, our, in our lives. And I think one thing no one's touched upon is the fact that Excel and financial modeling is really poorly taught in our university systems worldwide. Yes. And general principle. And I think even worse, like I did a Bachelor of Laws and Commerce at university. I went to work in investment banking. The se first day I was there, I got told, you're building a three-way financial model. <laughs> day one. And I said, that's interesting. I've never used Excel before at, 20, you know, at 24, 25 years old, a few years ago. And I think a lot of people watching the show today um, would be in a similar boat that smart people who they ha you know they have to figure it out the 90 percent of people are self-taught here yeah. and you're lucky if you've got a really good mentor um, and to your point about the pervasiveness and versatility of it I think it's something that businesses are driven ultimately by making money or cutting cost and they don't have time to ultimately upstream upskill everyone on, on, on a tool it gets the job done and I think model off is actually the first attempt in the world to actually really celebrate the power users, the mega users, and uh, alongside Microsoft and actually saying, where can we take these people to the next level? Um, and with data and with numbers. And um, so it's an exciting frontier, I think, the next five to ten years we're going to see. And um, let's just hope we get more people using, you know, just becoming just becoming better thinkers and better better power users of Excel. That would be, a, I think that would be a really good achievement. You know, Mike, Mike yeah. Irvin said a very similar thing. Uh, yes. He was on Mr. Excel is Fun, you know, being a professor that, you know, he considers it, uh, I, wanna, uh, I don't want to quote him, paraphrasing, but it's almost a, a, a travesty to some extent that, you know, a lot of people leave school and, and don't really have a good grasp of Excel, but think they have mm -hmm. a good grasp of stats and a good grasp of financial modeling. And, and having to learn that in Excel is actually what, what had helped start the whole channel to kind of to begin with. Yeah, um, and to, to your point of financial modelers being a lot of times a few years behind, I remember at the time that a million rows came out, you know, and, and 
that was the only reason that somebody would kind of, you know, from a fi financial modeling perspective, net present value doesn't change, total rate of return doesn't change. I don't have to worry, you know, I don't have to worry about a whole lot of my calculations and everything breaking. Um, but man, a million rows to me, that was like the killer app, you know. It, 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 for me, that was like a, a reason to move to the next level. But beyond that. You know, if I'm a financial modeler, I mean, to your point, the, there's no real reason for me to do that because my financial models are all kind of set and they're ready to go. They're good. They're good to go. Well, they say with startup companies, right? They say you've got to be ten times better than the, the competitor. I just right. don't think it will come and may not come for another ten or twenty years. Is ten times better? And um, you know, it, it, yeah, I think we all know the arguments, and um, we're pretty. I think we're all pretty proud of Excel. It's kind of it gets the job done and allows us. You know, for the people who can, who are lucky enough to work with Excel and do analysis for a living, uh, I think they're very fortunate to have such a great tool to work with. Right. Well, you know what? I, what I will add is this: subversion. <laughs> Why? Because you have people sitting at their desktop, as has been said, and they can't get stuff out of the database. They've got to wait a week for somebody to get it. Um, whatever, the, 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 uh, the magic database is too expensive to subscribe to. So they have Excel at their desktop, and they go to it. And then I hear from the people who have the big enterprises with the fancy, expensive stuff, and the whole team dedicated to that fancy, expensive stuff. Our vendors send us these Excel spreadsheets. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's what right. I was saying. That's what I was trying to say at the start of this in my really long-winded grant, which was that, um, you know, right now there is this, I mean, there was, I think we're kind of having a return to Excel, but there was a push that we needed to move towards these big systems that could do our data analysis. And the problem was, uh, and still is, is that companies have custom uh, issues that these big systems can't really address. They're too general. In Excel, you can make something yeah. better than what these big vendors can do, and you can make it faster, and you can make it cheaper. And yep. at the end of the day, if you have your internal team make it, you own it. So you're not paying a licensing fee to use it. So I think it's unbelievably important. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I think, Jordan, to your point in Oz, we had a really good strategy chat recently with someone kind of in the, the, the big data and analytics space, and what makes financial modeling special is kind of this ability to move this way. It's taking lots and lots and lots of variables in an incredibly intricate way and saying, this is how the alchemy works and this is how the magic goes together. Whereas a number of these kind of analytics vendors are, di are drilling really, really deep, amazingly deep into insights, into billions of bits of data, but they're doing it in in kind of in, 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 in this way, but it's not generating, it's generating insights, but in a different type of way around volume or um, other things. But the advantage of Excel and, and, and financial modeling together is this breadth and complexity and the versatility to solve things that just simply cannot be solved, solved by stock standard solutions. Right, and, and that, I really, really appreciate being part of Excel TV and what you all are doing in getting the word out. And uh, when we had Carrie Finn on, she talked about, you know, relying on the uh, Microsoft uh, Excel MVPs to help support the smaller businesses and, and get the word out because Excel is so powerful. And in the past few weeks, I've been having discussions with people about Google Docs. And I tell you, I'm going to do something bad, but no, no. I'm, I'm a nice fellow, but I'm not going to do anything bad. But these people keep talking about Google Docs. I tried to make dependent drop down lists. I've tried to make validation reliant on other sales. And yeah, you, you can do it if you program JavaScript, but Excel has ways of doing it. And we got to start getting the word out about Excel online. Because if you create dependent drop down lists in Excel and then bring them online, they still work. They don't work in Excel uh, in, in uh, Google Docs. So we we got to get that word out. So, so go ahead. I, I do have, I do have a, a quick question now that I was just thinking about this. So thinking about the future of Excel, um, you know the Excel uh, web app. So how do you um, 
Johan and John, how do you see that potentially changing the contest? Do you ever foresee uh, Excel Web App kind of showing up on the? I mean, just in just thinking yeah, yeah, in general, the right. changes of Excel, yeah. you know. We we Modelop's a brand, right? And Modelop it stands for a, it stands for a philosophy of what we stand for around Excel finance and financial modeling kind of at the intersection and accounting in there as well, kind of at the, at the, at the cross-section between all of them. Um, as new extensions and new opportunities, whether it's, it could be VBA too, right? Um, VBA, uh, it could be other forms of expansionary parts or different streams to the competition, a bit like the Tour de France, right? You can have different jerseys and different things. Um, it's apt, it's not for this year, but like if we were compa- if, if we were convinced enough as organisers that there, there was enough of a pool of people there, passion enough and evangelistic enough about it, yeah, absolutely, we'd um, model up would definitely consider, um, you know, having substreams, you know, as part of you know official world championship proceedings and um, just making the competition bigger with extra streams. What do you reckon, Johan? Yeah, the, look, we will get there eventually. I think it will be. As I said before, we use Excel because it got to 95% of our audience. The, the Excel online stuff is people are now starting to be unfamiliar with it, using it more and more. I think what you do with Excel, whether it be online or on your desktop, is still the same kind of stuff, right? And that's ultimately what our questions are based around. But I think as more and more people get familiar with the online version um, and as more and more people have access to it, that we'll be able to find cool, innovative ways to incorporate in the competition. And for us, I think it opens up a, a whole bunch of doors in terms of things that you could do potentially with multiple people um, editing one sheet and, and various things like that. But yeah, we uh, we look forward to finding out how to best incorporate this into our, our competition. But ultimately, I don't think it's going to change the, the substance of the competition because as John said before, we kind of our audience is that intersection between those three different industries and celebrating excellence in and around those industries and Excel, making it making it cool or making it acceptable, giving as you put us, giving people permission yeah. to to be passionate about Excel. And whether it's Excel on your desktop or Excel online, it's it doesn't matter. Yeah. People are passionate about Excel. And guys, before we go, uh, we go a little bit later on, the um we wanted to bounce a couple of ideas off you and your community. But, but, and also okay. down there, we're looking at putting together... Yes. Sorry, Oz. No, I wonder if you could talk about some of your other competitions and then we'll move on to that. Yeah, so we we had a lot of fun, as you can tell. We kind of like this stuff, um, running World Championship events. And we had so much success that this year we're actually running two more competitions. So one is the Big Data World Championships in October this year. So if you type in Big Data World Championships into Google, you'll find it. But you, if you type in texata.com, T-E-X-A-T-A, um, it's the brand, it's the model off equivalent for the Big Data Com- World Championship. So there's about 1,750 people signed up already for that competition. Three and a half months out, there's a lot of interest. Um, and that's really again about celebrating young professionals and students, and not just—it's not just like a, a little crowdsourcing competition. It's celebrating the breadth of data experience, celebrating yeah. people who know how to think about business problems in a wide range of skills. I'm going to sign machine. up for that. I'm going to sign up for that. It's on. Yeah, that's going to be cool. And also, before that, uh, Johan and me are pretty busy. Um, we're running the loyalty and gamification world championships. So. Loyalty rewards and gamification. So that's more around, you know, mobile marketing, the way you create incentives, the way you, um, you you put together gift programs. But you know, there's a basic economic fact that holding on to a customer is five times cheaper than acquiring a new one. And the skills that you show, um, and you can demonstrate, like recommendation engines as well. Great example for loyalty and gamification. How do you create customer stickiness and loyalty and, and celebrate engagement? So th- that's the loyalty games. So that loyalty games or loyalty games in um yeah that's later on in the year as well. So we've got three world championships this year, so it's a lot of fun. And um, but I think the one thing they all share is that it's about picking these innovative areas of I guess professional services in general, if you will, 
And A, giving people an environment where they can get involved, participate and learn. That learning sort of byproduct has always been really important to us. And then also celebrating excellence, making it okay to be passionate and celebrate the people who are the best in the world. And that's ultimately what these world championships come down to. And our dream, our dream, Oz, is to one day run the Olympics equivalent for consulting and professional services. Hey, cool. All right. Yeah, 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 and, uh, Oz, yeah. you'll be a special guest of mine. Oh, so, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll get a special bow tie made, too. Just for that. And I'll uh, let you have it. Yeah. Uh, so I can say, the, the data parsing live Friday night. You'll see Lynn Char mid, left, right used in ways that you have never seen. <laughs> Next up, Bill Jellin. <laughs> I think we've just found our second ever financial modeling commentary. Oz, right. welcome to the team. <laughs> I think uh, Oz needs to announce Bill. I think that'd be perfect. Uh, so, uh, so next up, uh, Oz. Oh, hot tips. Hot tips. All right. Now, before we go, we do want to uh, send it back to our guests. So let's just remember that to talk about some of their ideas. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Um, oh, yeah. Right, Jordan? So, so we had a couple of ideas oh, yes. around T-shirts for this year because we've had a few people request that we start. Um, they're pretty passionate about model, obviously, in the uh, 110 countries competing around the world. So... We thought T-shirts would be a, our first step into merchandise, so we thought we'd create something nice and easy and, and simple. So at the moment, um, Johan and, and John here are, are thinking about some slogans, Johan? Would that Correct. Be right? So I'm not sure whether we've got the, uh, the concepts up on uh, your screen, Jordan, but we essentially sat down the other day and said, all right, well, what kind of uh, T-shirts? would the kind of the passionate Excel user like to be able to own? So we've, I think, at the moment got about eight different concepts that range from the, uh, the, the interesting to the, to the slightly wacky. And I, I think, Rick, if your eye movement is any indication, are they about to pop up on the screen? Yeah, we're waiting for, waiting for Jordan. Are you pulling that up, Jordan? Yep, I'm pulling it up. One All second. Right. Let me... Uh... So these are just concepts at this stage, but to anyone out there who's watching it, uh, we're sort of taking feedback at the moment. We're probably going to put the best sort of three or four, get them actually designed properly, get them actually printed uh, and put up online, uh, available for the whole community to, to buy. Because we felt, you know what, there are people who feel so passionately about Excel that just like any other kind of startup or technology business or um, 1990s sort of, uh, video game console, the Excel community needs their t-shirts as well. So I might so read them out. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't got time for that. <laughs> like that. Because what was the next one? Well, I can't see. Let's have a look. Um, trust trust me. me, I model. <laughs> nice. The next Ooh, one? Like <laughs> I can go all night. Nice. That's a good the next one. one. That's a good one. Cool. The evolution. Yep. I like the that. evolution. Yeah. Ooh, I like so that. Today. Also the evolution. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Evolution. evolution of Excel. And I think there were a few. Well, there were a couple of the top. Start. Go to the top. What was the top? Um, oh, holy macro. It's a good one. That's a good one. Bill Jelen may uh, have copyrighted that. Well, we no, just realized the other day that oh, that's the uh, name of his publishing. And, so we'll, um, we'll have to get his tick of approval, but I'm sure yeah. he'll appreciate it. Um, spreadsheet superstar. I like this one. I like this one. That, that's uh, what, yeah, and I use Excel for recreational purposes. So it's, like uh, there's a few ideas. I like that one a lot. Me you know, too. maybe we should have a we should have some people send some ideas in. Maybe we should put that as a absolutely. So what's that? We can use the comments down below when this goes up on uh, on YouTube for people who want to uh, either vote for their favorite or suggest any sort of uh, extra ideas. Feel free to perhaps use the comments down below to to get involved. Yeah. Great. Cool. That's awesome. I'm I'm geeked up. I like that. <laughs> I would have to get a shirt. I would have to get a shirt. Next time, I want to have a shirt. Are, are those for sale right now? Can I buy one of those right oh, now? Yes, no. They will be probably in the next two to three weeks. Okay. All right. Well, two, two shows out then. Two shows out, I'll have one of those. That's awesome. Excellent. <laughs> I'll get you one, Rick. Nice. Uh, so thanks, fellas. Uh, Oz, tips. All right. Hot tips. 
ready. Open your mouth and get your milk ready because this is going to burn. All right. So does uh, – why, why are y'all laughing? We're trying to be serious here. Y'all this is a professional show. Huh? <laughs> All right. Uh, Jordan, Rick, uh, Johan, John, you all have any tips to share? I have a tip. Okay. All right. Let's see Jordan's tip. All right. This isn't going to be – you know, this isn't going to be a five sriracha. In fact, um, before the show, we were talking about what kind of hot sauce uh, is very popular in Australia. So this is really going to be maybe one Tabasco bottle. That's what I'm thinking, because that is very popular, as we turn out, as it turns out, Tabasco in Australia. Okay, so this is um, uh, for a freestyler like me. So uh, this is a quick tip, and actually, I think I'm going to I'm going to freestyle again and make make it two quick tips. So I'm actually going to do two things. So one of the things I hate when I'm coding um, is if I have an error. So let's say I'm typing up. I say if I equals 9. And I think, oh, I want to go type something else over here. So I have pressed up, and it says, oh, you can't do that. That's a syntax error. So I kind of hate that um, because I want to be able to take some, move from something that's wrong and jump. Let's say, oh, I forgot. I really meant to say I equals 8 here. So I want to be able to do that uh, seamlessly. So the way to do that seamlessly, and I always this is part of my uh, blog post I had on the five tips to make your Visual Basic programming experience much uh, easier. So, um, and this is one of the things I think is just a major causer of headaches that that annoying pop up is get rid of this auto syntax check. So that's going to take it off for me. So let's say I'm over here. I'm saying if I equals nine, and I say oh I forgot something. I can just I've just hit up now, and now you see that no error popped up, but it did highlight the offending script in red. So I still get to jump around because I am a freestyler, as I've come to learn. I'm going to embrace that, um, and I can do it without that annoying pop up because I really think it just interrupting you is is really one of the one of the things that breaks uh, code flow. You know, sometimes you have an idea and you just want to really just want to jump around and type it out, and then that um that annoying pop-up happens. So I'm going to actually show you something else because I just thought of it, but it's something that I always uh, recommend. So real quick, um, everyone knows the comment syntax, so if I want to write a comment here, I'm going to just write, hello, I am a comment. So if I hit enter, you see that mine, my comment is a different color. So it's this really abrasive-looking color. And the reason I changed it to that was because um, the default Excel color, in fact, you, if you're looking closely, you'll see my all my defaults have changed is this really light, or I wouldn't say light, it's, it's this greenish color, but it blends in with the rest of your text. So um, the way to change that is you can go to Tools, Options, uh, Editor Format, and then you can go down to your comment text and you can change it from there. So I really like a very abrasive looking comment, um, just telling me this is uh, uh, not code, this is text, it's a note to you. So those are my, we'll say two tips, I guess they're all one editor tip, but two tips. So. There you go. What do you think, Oz? All right. I, I, I like abrasive uh, abrasiveness for the comments. No, it's true. You want, I mean, the thing oh! is that the default. <laughs> yeah. Right. This is a comment. Oh, three. Yeah. three. Oh! All right, all right. All three, right. I'll take three. Three. We'll take yeah. it. <laughs> all right. So, uh, Rick, John, Johan, anyone? Buddy. Uh, look, just maybe one real quick tip that we actually picked up from some of the, the finalists in our in my life competition is the F1 key gets in the way a lot when oh, God, yes. uh, moving between escape and F2 to be able to expose a formula. Um, now, I mean, some people may have tried to disable it in various ways. What we noticed, the very best in the world we're doing, we're actually just getting a button knife and just, like, removing that key from their keyboard. Anything that gets in your way... Just get it out of there. That so some, some, of these guys said, some of these guys had six keys, wasn't it, Johan? Possibly. Some of them, one of them had six keys taken off the keyboard. Uh, wow. if, you want to, if you want to be a world champion, bring your butter knife. Bring your butter knife to New York. Bring your butter knife. And that's uh, true. And make sure if you're using a work computer. You know, that, that, that ought to be... <laughs> ask them yeah. first. That ought, to be, that ought to be on the T-shirts. That's going to be the first comment down below. I'm an Excel super pro. Bring your butter knife. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna give that a, a three sriracha bottle. That's that's for people who are speedy. And and when I saw the video about that, that's the issue is if you accidentally hit that F1 key, it takes seconds to open, and then you have to close it. So when speed is an issue, 
You might get as well just put your get head out and go home. Go to the kitchen. Get your butter knife. Yeah. All right. Cool. Cool. All right. So um, here's something that I, I'm going to share. Let's go to the screen here. All right. Okay. Um, now we're looking at Jordan. Hold on. Yep. I see myself. Now I'm, I'm fading. Okay. Here I'm trying to get this, get to the right screen. I've got two screens here that I'm working with. Uh, want, want the website here. Okay. Technical difficulty. Okay, so this was pretty cool here. Where um, at Listen Data, um, someone created a formula for turning text, uh, turning taking dollar values and turning it into text. Okay, yeah, and he created, he uh, made the formula available. Okay, but I had a problem when I took the code and pasted it into another worksheet. Things started getting weird. So I'm going to switch to my Excel. Let's close this. Okay, so here is the formula here. I, I pasted it in, and it's, it's strange, right? And if I cut, bring this down... Okay, so that's right because I've cleaned it up. But what how I cleaned it up was I took the entire code and pasted it into Word. Right? And what's happening is we have things like sheet one, B five, and then we had some uh, absolute references. So what I did was did a replace and we have a uh, dollar sign replace that with nothing. Okay, and then let's take uh, sheet one, and we get rid of nine of them, right? So now we can take this this formula. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. Right, I was just about to ask you. Okay. No, we can't. We can't see. So you want to put that up on the screen? Okay, I will do that. Uh, all right. Okay. We should have some music while we're waiting. <laughs> right. <laughs> maybe we, maybe we all start playing bass because that's what we're all bassists, you know. Uh -huh. Maybe drums. All right, so I pasted the formula into Word. That's a huge formula. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So I pasted it in because we have things like this, right? Because that's not going to change when you paste it in, right? Unless you have a C1 and a B5 and everything is lined up. So what I did was I did a replace to get rid of that, replace all, okay? And I think it replaces off the screen too. So if you're able to move it into the screen. So I'm going to replace. Okay, so that's not showing up on the screen, I see. For whatever reason. But anyway, so I'm just replacing that. And then uh, there were eight to be replaced. Okay. And we see that it's doing it down at the bottom. So Yeah. So it's it's replaced, it's gotten rid of those references to sheet one. And so then we can take the entire formula. Okay. And so now I've got a new screen share here. So we can take the formula and then paste it in, and then it will work. But it was working kind of strange because of those cell references. And so the point being, 
that I used Word in order to clean up a formula because those uh, absolute cell references and references to sheet names were in the formula, and I was not going to go through a big formula like that and fish them out one at a time. So by using Word, find and replace, get it out, and then back to Excel, and it worked fine. You know, Oz, you're a pretty creative guy. I mean, before you you brought in OneNote and you showed us how to use that. You, you use all the tools you got, huh? Hey, that's part of our style, man. That's right. It's part of our spin-off series, Word TV. Right. right. So, so, I so I wonder, it, are those kind of things fair in model off? What 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 are what are what's against the rules? You can do what you want. <laughs> so, so what's against the rules? It has to be your work, independent. You can't have other people helping you, uh, and you're essentially limited to what you can do within Excel. Okay. So so doing something in Word to try to figure things out? Look, using things like Word to manipulate a formula, that's fine. The feedback that we get, though, is that to write a formula that long would not be the quickest way to do what they need to do within time limits. So... Yeah, I mean, I've actually used Excel or a, um, a notepad to do that kind of thing to understand how a formula works myself. So yeah, it's a very creative tool. I think within Modeloff, these kinds of things, these sort of maybe sort of perfectionist type things, don't usually end up kind of being a core part of what goes on in Modeloff. As John was saying before, it's really about how can we just smash it out as quickly as possible. So unless you can kind of figure out how I'm going to do this really, really quickly, uh, it's probably not going to work. Right, right. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, okay. Cool. So, um, all right. So, I don't know how valuable that is to people, but I do wind up using Word a lot for that kind of thing. You know, looking at other people's formulas, uh, cleaning things up, and just getting stuff done. Gotta get it done, Oz. That's right. All so, right. So, so, what's your rating on that? I think I would. Uh, is that a four? That's a four. All right, all right. All right, so, okay. Yeah, get a four because uh, it can pull somebody's ass out of on a fire, but not the kind of fire they're going to be in every day, which would be a five sriracha tip. But uh, there you go, my brothers and sisters. Just on that point, though, I was about sort of trying to manipulate really long and complex formulas and trying to figure out the Excel formula bar, you're right, usually isn't the best way to try and really get your head around a formula. And there are lots of wonderful add-ins for Excel out there that exist that kind of help you kind of trans transverse, move around that formula. And I know we're still sort of, uh, I think, getting to the shameless plug section of the show, but uh, Spreadsheet Studio is a, uh, a tool out there that has helped people kind of in this area. And in the interest of full disclosure, one of the people who's actually involved in writing the questions uh, for Model Up, Joseph McDade, it's a product that he's actually developed. But I know that that's helped a lot of people in terms of, right, how can I actually better use the, uh, the formula bar to actually understand what is my formula doing without actually having to take it out of Excel. So if you've got problems in that, go check out uh, Spreadsheet Studio. It is a shameless plug, but uh, I think that's uh, coming up later on our uh, segment, so I just thought I'd get in early. Right, right. That's fine. and that's called spreadsheet what? Sh spreadsheet Studio. Spreadsheet Studio. Okay. Cool. Cool. You know, um, in he wrote he wrote a couple of the questions for Modeloff, right? The guy, so he's pretty good. Joseph McDade. Okay. Yeah, we got to check that out. Yeah, Rick, we got to make make some kind of an uh, um have a, a plan for to the, put these uh URLs. No doubt. Very obvious place, because um, this does come up a lot, and that's where I um, started to get my real Excel skill. Was I started as a commissions planner? I mean, a commissions analyst, and I got this spreadsheet that somebody else made. And in commissions, exactly. you have all these product lines and tiers and percentages and bonuses and things. Then somebody wrote this massive formula that then I had to sit down and figure out how the hell does this thing work. And well, should you feel the 2000, you can have a look at it, Oz, and, uh, yeah. and maybe share it with other people if you think it's relevant. Yeah, yeah, we'll do. All right, so, so, so thanks for that. We're going to move on to the to the news section. So uh, kind of to, to jump on what you just said, Oz, I'll just kind of uh, 
jump on that with some of the news then. You know, if you're inheriting somebody's formula, I think that Chan Du just put out a pretty good podcast, I want to say in the last week or so, that was exactly around that topic, you know, inheriting other people's complex formulas and, you know, what's, what's the best way to be able to do that. So uh, if anybody's listening, we'll put the link down below, down below this video so that you can check that out. Um, my news, I want to share my desktop here. Brand new Excel forum that is out. One moment. You guys tell me when you can see my desktop. We can see it. We see us. Nope. Now we see Excel we Basement. See Excel Basement. So this is live today. Uh, the Excel basement.org forum. And what I'm most impressed about, you see, there's, there's only like two things right now. Uh, but I am top comment number two. <laughs> so, so this thing, this Great, thing well is. Well done. I uh, know, right? I, I, you know, uh, probably, uh, I mean, I, I was on it. I saw that on Facebook and said, I'm on it. I won't be number one. And it's up the guy who owns the thing was number one. So, so you know, anyway. So go check out this forum. It's young yet. The site overall, and this is just the forum that's opening up right now, but the site's probably about two months or so old. Uh, they've got a pretty good, uh, they're all about community, which is what I really like about these guys. Uh, this guy here, Rahim, hopefully we'll have him on here shortly. Yeah. Uh, you know, he, he runs this out of Pakistan, I believe. And Oz, he is a Harvard guy like you. So, uh, you know, we've got a whole bunch of, whole bunch of smart Excel people, so you, know, you have a kindred spirit there. So when we have him on, and and you two, and then Oz, and I'll just be kind of, I'll just kind of be, it'll be like three guys and a dude. I'll just be like the dude. But anyway, so we got uh, Excel Basement. They just opened up their forum, so go check it out at excelbasement.org forward slash forum. You can be one of the first uh, first people to get to this forum and uh, and check it out. So anyways, let me uh, pass this back to you guys. Yeah, yeah, we got to get Raheem on. I found out that yeah, he took an online course at Harvard's Kennedy School of Government. I went there, all five foot four of me. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I did talk with him about that. Uh, and I've been to Karachi, too. Maybe I saw him while I was walking around. Oh. Anyway, um, so the news... That I would have is yes, Jordan and I will be teaching a workshop here in June. And when is that in June, Jordan? Uh, <laughs> I'm say I think it was June. Uh, you know what? I think I'm gonna double check on that. I think it was June 16th. Yeah, here in Chicago at McCormick Place, and um, I am thinking about doing something that I call an Excel rodeo. Because <clears throat> when I've done, uh private workshops, the people seem to have loved having an opportunity where I had no agenda. Just come in and answer their questions. Because when I come in with something canned, like, okay, so we're going to talk pivot tables. Okay, a lot of times they go back to their desk and their data is not in shape to go into a pivot table. So during this open session where I've got no agenda, that's what they that's where they have an opportunity to ask those kind of questions of, of what they're dealing with. And sometimes they just need a formula written for them. And I've talked with some other Excel trainers who've toyed with this idea that I've called an Excel rodeo. So um, thinking about, you know, I'm planning to move to Portland in August and thinking about before I leave Chicago, maybe I will host an Excel rodeo. So if anybody's interested in having me do that, then let me know. Get in touch with me. So you're you're going to Portland, Oregon. Is that is that where you're going? That's right. Are you are you a hipster? Is that? Oh, you're trying to get more people into the hipster into the hipster wagon, aren't hipster you? Hipster oh, Excel movement. Oh man, I, I'm I'm 49 years old, and I'm not going to be an old man in Chicago dealing with snow and ice. I'm having it. That's a fair I'm, point. That's a fair I'm point. Go to, go to the Pacific Northwest and and, and smile. And be happy until I have to take my dirt nap in a couple decades, right? Yeah, I'm not gonna have no dirt nap in a bunch of snow. <laughs> not having it. 
<laughs> so, so, so the whole goal is to not take a dirt nap in snow. Nobody that's likes snow dirt naps. <laughs> that's, that's a valid, valid yeah, point. Y'all start thinking about that now. I love snow. I'm, I'll be, I'll be okay with it. I love Chicago. Great hot dogs. Yeah. That's my new. How about you, Jordan? Yes, I do have something for my friend. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. I think it's it's Bjorn. Um, he actually wrote a blog post on my blog, but that's not what I'm here to show you. I want to show you his cool um, software. Uh, and I'm not. I'll be honest. You know, I'm not entirely sure how it works because I'm still. I still haven't given it a try. But it's called Spread Git. And for those of you who don't know, um, Git is a technology that. Um, uh, is used for versioning files. So if you've ever done Git, if you've ever uh, seen GitHub and downloaded something from there, or your friends who do um, uh, .NET programming and uh, other programming languages ever talk about Git, or even Subversion is another one. Um, it's a way of versioning. So what uh, Bjorn has uh, his aim with this is to get rid of the sort of ridiculous versioning that we're doing, and so he's developed a online tool, and as far as I can tell, it's also an add-in with Excel that helps you um, deal with version, versioning, and that's actually, to me, that's something that's incredibly important. I know that Eurosprig, which is the, um, or I hope I said that right, it's the European Spreadsheet Risk uh, Interest Group, something like that. They're, they have a devotion um, to investigating uh, spreadsheet risks, and one of those risks is archiving and versioning. So. This is actually something that's very exciting because I've always said that we should have more things like Git or Subversion for Excel, and it looks like someone has already started that, so you can go there and check it out and tell us how it works, and I may be someone who uses it for all my projects here soon, so I'm really excited to look at it. Also, check out my blog. Bjorn wrote an uh, article on there, so jumping back. John, Johan. Yeah. Anything no, I was just going to say on that last one, the spread Git, that's really cool. We were actually speaking to somebody who tried to do a, uh, a similar sort of GitHub-based uh, repository for big data uh, types of products. So you can kind of upload various algorithms and things and kind of not only version, um, versioning control, but also it allowed other people to kind of upload their data sets uh, and be able to run them against various algorithms. So that Git style... Um, of being able to kind of manipulate things that are an ongoing, uh, I guess, creation, if you will. And, and let's face it, spreadsheets are very rarely ever finished, so to speak. It's just a, it's a continual evolution, so something like that is good. Look, from our ex uh, perspective, no real industry news at our end. Model off kicks off later in the year. We'll have uh, more to say about that uh, probably then. Cool. And Pierre, some of your, cha some of your challenge winners will, uh, will give a free entry to Model off. Yes, How's yes, that sound? Yes. You happy with that? That is awesome, man. That is yeah. awesome. But, uh, that nah, is awesome. It's a pleasure being on the show. Thanks for having us, guys. It's really good. Yeah. Keep up the great work. in here. So, so uh, let's, let's, uh, let's jump on over to Shameless Plugs then. i uh, tell you guys, uh, hey, guess what? I'm still speaking at that conference. <laughs> 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 yeah, I know you thought, I know you're like, wow, why hadn't that happened yet? It probably should have happened already. It's, it's kind of odd that that hasn't happened yet. Uh, can you see my screen? Yep. Okay. So it's actually happening next week, which means I'm going to have to find something else to talk about. I'm going to have to start, like, updating my blog and actually being productive, right? Yeah. So, anyways, this conference, the uh, SAP Sapphire Now, the ASUG, or uh, America SAP User Group Annual Conference here at this convention, and Orlando, Florida, June 3rd through 5th. So this will be me down here. Um, I, I'm this guy with this uh, this cool, handsome picture down here. Uh, there's nothing there. i got to figure that out. But I'm speaking with... Like I know, right? Uh, that's, uh, oh, man. It kind of messed up my hair a little bit, but you know, I'm working on that. Anyways, so I got... I'm speaking at this conference, and we're talking, to, talking about Gwinnett County, which is the second largest county in... Georgia, right outside of Atlanta, about how and why they developed a multi-year business intelligence strategy. So we talk about how you develop a strategy for the police department, the fire department, the water department, or anything that has to do with a municipal government. So we'll be sp I'll be speaking at 10.30 a.m. on Tuesday, and that's awesome because it's right at the very beginning of the conference. 
which means afterwards I get to what? Go to sleep. It's going to be really good. And afterwards I have to what? Figure out something else to talk about in the plugs section because I'm going to be done. There's going to be nothing else. I've been talking about this for six months, so I'm going to have to actually uh, I'm going to have to be productive on my blog from here on out. So how about how about you, Oz? What you got going on? Shameless plugs. I guess it's got it crossed up that yeah, um, Jordan and I'll be teaching, and I'm thinking about the, doing the Excel rodeo, and uh, life is good here in Chicago. And if we go really, really, really shameless plugs, I've been doing some stand up around Chicago, and it's been it's been good. So so you've been doing more stand up than just like the like the original ones we saw. You you, you, you like have this it's like a thing now. Do you have some videos you can share? Can we put some links somewhere, or is it all kind of X-rated? No, it's not, no, 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 no. I did, um, oh, man. No, but see, here's the serious thing, though. It's because I enjoy Excel TV and, and getting in front of people talking about data, and so I've been taking improv and stand-up classes to support what I do in Excel. But, you know, going and being a stand-up, man, that means going out to somewhere in the middle of the night being number 37 out of 42 comics that are trying to get on before the place closes at 3 o'clock in the morning. No, that's that's not why I'm doing it. But the idea of, of, a, of a rhythm and teasing humor out of very serious topics is fun, you know, and it, and it does help what I do with with Excel and talking about data. Um, yeah, so I told one we had to talk about something really simple simple things, right? Big things are easy to fit, get humor out of. But I said, you know, my, uh, my mother had to talk, to talk with me about, son, if you're going to do something in this world, you got to be twice as good, twice as good as guys over 5'7", because they run this world at 5'4", you got to be better. <laughs> If you're gonna be heard, you got to open your mouth. If you're gonna be seen, you got to stand on a chair and wear bright colors. <laughs> but Dave, or a bow tie. Cool. Right? Yeah, and a bow tie. Yeah, that's right. So <laughs> anyway, but just thinking about that and teasing humor out of something so small. Yeah, you get some good stuff out of Excel. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Uh, uh, John and Johan, you talked a little bit about Spreadsheet Studios and, and Monolop coming up. Is there anything else you'd like to share? No, I think I should just get get people behind. Um, if you want to just um, jump on the website, have a look, and just follow us on Facebook um, and, and LinkedIn. We keep the latest up. We've we got some big announcements coming up about some new sponsors that are coming on board. Yep. So um, w w we're really excited to announce... Um, there's two or three big sponsors we're going to be announcing soon, um, which um, we look forward to celebrating with you. And um, yeah, if we get the opportunity again next year, we'll uh, we'll, we'll plug plug people a bit heavier. But you just get it, get on Facebook and support us. And um, yeah, we look forward to um, supporting you as you continue to grow. And um, we really support the initiative. There's actually going to be a video interview with uh, the inaugural finalist, Alex Gordon from New Zealand, that goes up on the the Facebook page for Model Off uh, in the next 24 hours. So tomorrow. In the U.S., people can uh, jump on there and perhaps get a little bit more of an understanding of this person's story, how he learnt Excel, the challenges that he faces, uh, building some very complex models. He works for uh, PwC in New Zealand, so uh, it's just a, a short little five-minute interview that our head of question design, Joseph McDade, was able to get with Alex uh, in Sydney recently. So. That's going to be going up recent, uh, in, in the next 24 hours. And, and later in the year, we'll be releasing a video that we took in New York with who, the woman who could be the first financial modeler ever. And um, Johan and uh, Chris um, did a, a lengthy interview. So we've got, we've got all the footage. We've just got to kind of... So here's something that your audience might be really interested in. Uh, a lady by the name of Susan Cabral in the 70s, 60s, 70s, was actually one of the first ever people in the world to use a mainframe computer to run some kind of uh, sort of balance sheet and P&L forecast. Wow. So as far as we can tell, she's the first ever financial modeler. So That's we're awesome. able to kind of her and chat to her and she actually showed us some of these printouts from these mainframes that she had from uh, I think the 70s and 80s where 
literally, I mean, you, you think about how many times you enter a formula, you hit enter, you see what it does, and if it doesn't quite work, you change it. And you do that within a matter of seconds. Imagine a time where you have to submit a formula, wait two days for somebody with a mainframe computer to then go and run it, catch a train out to their office, get the printout, check for errors, find the errors, update your code, resubmit it, and then wait another couple of days. That's what she went through. So we did a whole interview with her. So when we put that up... You'll we'll enjoy that. You'll enjoy that. That's you know. awesome. To answer your question from earlier, uh, Jordan, that's why Excel's never going away, man. <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. Some of the spreadsheets I've seen... The legend, the legend grows. And exactly. I, I think finally, as we touched on, we hold the live finals in New York. So we'll have to find a way to uh, to get the three of you guys there and involved in the, the fun festivities of, of uh, the live finals of Model Off because uh, it's a really great vibe. Anyone who's ever attended it knows what it's like. Uh, but I think, yeah, we'll find a way to get you guys to New York. That, uh, that would be great. Well, that sounds great. So oh, yeah, I can't... All we have is place to stay. I just got to get there. <laughs> I can't. I can't be in the same room as Bill because we're gonna just argue. We're gonna. Oh. <laughs> There's a few other MVPs there too, right? So it's like uh, yeah. uh, you'll be in good company. <laughs> so how about, how about you, Jordan? Anything to share? Uh, yes, I do. I do have something to share. So for all you operations, research, management, science folks out there, if you are in the Cincinnati and Dayton, Ohio region, or if you're in Columbus. Ohio, or let's just say you're near. I'm actually going to be at the um, 2014 uh, Informs Fall Technical Symposium held here in Dayton, and I'll be doing a talk on data visualization. So uh, if you're really interested in that, and you should be, because this will be a sort of a, a primer, um, you know, here's what the research says, here's why you shouldn't use a pie chart, um, that sort of stuff, that sort of fun stuff. I've done this talk before, and it's been, been really good. So if you want to go there, you want to meet me too, um, I'm going to be doing a talk there, and hopefully there'll be a web page up later. Right now, I'm just I just have an email sent to me, so I don't have anything to show on that. But if you are in that area in the Miami Valley region, I'd love to see you come out and part of Informs too. I think I think there are non-member uh, attendants as well, and I don't think it's very much. So I'll have more information on that as it comes up. It looks like it's at the end of August. So. Well, thank you for that, and and uh, thank you, uh, Johan and John, for for joining us. Yeah, I got to tell you with your um. With the model off later on this later on this year, and 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 your offer of potentially uh, you know going up and and uh, maybe going up and watching the festivities, I, I gotta tell you, I, I could just I can imagine a situation where Jordan and Oz and I put on our model off T-shirts that you showed us a little yeah. bit earlier. We jump yeah. in a Ghostbusters type van with Bill Jelen. Right, uh, we just we take a road trip straight from from Jacksonville, Florida, to Chicago, to Ohio, where we pick up Jordan and Bill, and we just head straight to New York, and we just make a party out of it. I, I gotta the tell you, the Microsoft guys, the Microsoft guys, you, you love the session there too as well. Like, um, you know, the Microsoft guys are fantastic, and um, S and P is fantastic, and some of the you know the meeting and networking, having fun, and um. Doing the stuff you love with people you love is there's not much more you want in life. So that's awesome. We can just keep the camera running the whole time. Uh, let's keep keep it going the whole time. We'll do a awesome. behind the scenes documentary on your road trip too. <laughs> the, the, the pilgrimage. pilgrimage. Yeah, exactly. I like how you're thinking. That that could be really good. I like uh, the, uh, the bass guitar in the van. We'll get a yes. few <laughs> Right. A little, a little I, bass, I a little drums. But this is good. This is good. I really appreciate the passion. You know, Oz, this is an, also an opportunity for you and uh, and Bill Jelen uh, to, to to park the Ghostbusters van in a parking lot and go in and help some people with their finding with their models, right? And just save their day, like you guys have talked about, man. This is this is the opportunity to make that dream happen for Bill. You can make this happen. Yeah. Hey, Oz, can I just can I just put something out there, right? Yeah. And I know this is going live. So one of the things we were having, we were having. We we're brainstorming, and we're allowed to brainstorm because that's it's kind of our competition. Yeah. So <laughs> Jordan's laughing in the background. I can see. <laughs> yeah. No, you can, you can do that. Yeah. <laughs> about putting on this year in the finals a competition where we put together three or four of the Microsoft Excel MVPs versus a few of like four, three or four of the Model Art finalists. Oh, we put them me. together oh, okay. for their own challenge. On an Excel-based challenge, it will be a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like that. I like that. It's a celebration. 
celebration event, so it, it would be in front of the, an audience thing. But if it, if that's something that excites you or your your viewers or something like that, let us know. And um, yeah, we're just toying around with it at the moment, but um, that could be a lot of fun. I think it should also be uh, also be versus the three or four people who uh, who developed the product. But no, no, no. The Microsoft the people, they lose. Down. Here's the thing, though, is is um understand that uh, you know I'm so glad we had Carrie Finn on because she talked about the the community and and the giving aspect, the sharing of knowledge aspect being key to being an MVP. So. I wonder about some people who might know a whole lot of stuff but don't have time to be on forums answering questions or, or sharing knowledge and not because they're stingy but you know as I'm finding I'm, I'm writing a book on um, Excel and man it's been hard to blog it's been hard to do anything while I'm writing this book so um, I wonder if you get some MVPs do you have some smart people who have too much time on their hands? Well, maybe, maybe we, we we can take this offline, but um, we're, okay. we're certainly thinking about yeah. We're th we're thinking about um, uh, a celebration event. It's it's really um, some people from almost members from the crowd or the you know, highly skilled Excel people to take on some of the model off finalists because everyone's got a, a couple of common passions. So yeah, what do you think, Jordan? No, I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. I I'm kind of scared to go up against these guys because you know. Nah, they're as good as you're I as good as me. I can be thorough, but I'm not quick. I mean, I'm not like I'm not like I've seen. You know, I've seen people go at it. My F1 key is still on here. You right, know. Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't start coding with a butter knife. <laughs> it's fifteen bucks. We'll change that. We'll buy. Yeah. We'll buy a keyboard for you. <laughs> we'll we bring a button up. selling that. We'll, we'll spell. You should sell a special model off keyboard, and it just has. Buttons removed. It comes free with seven t-shirts. You buy your seven right. t-shirts, you get a keyboard with some keys. You get a keyboard, like a special partnership or sponsorship with uh, Logitech or, or somebody like that or, or right. Microsoft or well, hardware maybe, division. Let's do that. A special <laughs> limited edition gold <laughs> But, uh, Microsoft keyboard that just comes with no F1 key at all. Right. <laughs> I think this is a great idea. Or you know, you go with the butter knife companies and you know, model off butter. Knife. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah, you, you'd have to even out the field somehow. But yeah, I, I like the idea. So yeah, look, so let's continue a conversation offline and uh, so uh, so I guess that's, it. that's how we'll that's how we'll finish episode nine with uh with a whole bunch of us nerds talk about uh, butter knives and how we can code faster. So. <laughs> Until next time, we'll see you in two weeks. Thanks for the model off, guys, John and Johan. Appreciate you joining us. Thank you. Thank Thanks you for having us on. Great. For, yeah. for, for Oz and Jordan, uh, this is Rick Grantham of Excel TV, and we'll see you in two weeks. See you next Thanks. time. All right. Bye.